Welcome everyone to another Star Wars The Old Republic video and in this video I have a treat for you guys. We are going to be doing an exclusive in-game look at almost all of the items that I talked about in my last video. So yes I have the armor sets and the Basilisk War Mount and all of those goodies. Get your Soul Tri Barbie on because we are going to look at some pretty awesome in-game items. So we are going to start with the Advanced Scout Recon Walker. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to let the item play out. Uh, you guys can hear the sound, see how it moves, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. So I hope you guys enjoyed that preview. Just a few notes about the model itself. It has a, uh, a holographic image that shows up on the dashboard. I think that's a pretty cool visual effect. Now it does also say that it has a flourish associated with it. Uh, now when I tried the flourish, nothing happened. So I think that just means it's an incomplete model. But I'm pretty sure what the flourish is just going to end up being is that it's going to be the front guns that fire. But aside from that, as I said before, I think this is a great addition to the Walker series. Like it has a lot of versatility and agility, it's got the whole front side that is open, and I just think it's really reminiscent of the Clone Wars and of the walkers that were uh, available then. So I, yeah, I think it's great. Alright, let's move on to the armor sets, and we're going to start with the Wayward Voyagers armor set. Now this one is just the bane of my existence, I'll tell you why. As I said before, I'm not a big fan of this one. I think it comes across as very lackluster. I mean, sure, the upper body armor is okay. Uh, it's got, as I said before, kind of a Jedi robe-like feel to it. It's got that funky looking uh, glove where just on one side of the glove, it's got, I don't know what that is, some sort of mechanism or device to it. But yeah, I just think like it's a lackluster armor. It totally should be silver rarity. It's actually gold rarity on the PTS. The reason I don't like that is because I feel like it adds to a huge pool of shitty gold items that I don't think are going to be particularly popular or valuable, but they're gold items. And that kind of sucks because when you're opening cartel packs or, um, or anything of the like and you get a gold item, you want that gold item to be valuable. And the more kind of items you have in that pool that are not very valuable gold items, it kind of limits your ability to actually get value from opening packs or anything like that. So it's not a great addition, I don't think, overall, especially in the context of all these other items which we're getting, which are pretty nice. This one just kind of, I don't think it's going to get any attention. Yeah, let me know if you guys are fans of this one. I already had a few people on my last video who said they actually quite like this design. I'm just not a big fan of it. So let's move on to something a little bit more interesting then. Alright, so the next armor set we have here is actually a mystery armor set. This one is the Jedi armor set. So there's nothing that we really heard about this one yet, but it's actually based off of the Jedi Order, which is not the same as the Jedi Order. Why do I know this? Because I just watched a video on Star Wars Explained, because I didn't know what the hell was the difference between Jedi and Jedi. Uh, they both sound the same, but anyways, the Jedi Order is a precursor to the Jedi Order. And they are ancient Force-sensitive beings on Tython, they have battles with the Rakata, they're completely part of the Old Republic lore, and I think it's pretty cool that they're being added into the game. Uh, in terms in the form of this armor set as well as in the form of the ancient Jedi blade because I'm pretty sure that's based off of the Jedi uh, blades that they had during their time because they had swords that glowed with the force and that's very reminiscent of the description of the ancient Jedi blade. So the reason I kind of like this stuff is because it shows that Swartar is going more in the direction of adding in more lore based armor pieces and lore based uh, weapons and stuff and I really like that because I think the lore of Star Wars The Old Republic is one of the coolest elements of the game and if we can't get content or stories based upon the lore at least we could get some items that kind of uh, are reminiscent of the lore. But let's talk about the armor set specifically because this one is a funky one. Now this one is complete red, white, and blue. Like this is a July the 4th celebration on, on, on the screen right now. Um, look at those boots guys. That is a shiny thick boot and it's probably one of my favorite parts about this armor set. Like those boots look nice. If you really want to make a fashion statement, you wear those boots. But other than that, I think yeah, it's got this red, white, and blue theme. I'm not sure if that's what they're going for. This could just be a placeholder image. I have no clue about this armor set because it's completely unfinished. But one thing to just note is that it does have a mask associated with it. Uh, but the mask isn't going to show on the in-game model because it's glitched, but you can see it on the character screen. Other than that, I, I think this is unfinished. We're going to have to wait and see what the actual armor set looks like. I think the more important take-home point from this one is that they're going and adding some more uh, items based off of old lore, and I think that's pretty awesome. Next, we have the Mandalorian Stormbringers armor set. You guys can see this armor set now in all of its glory. It looks pretty darn sweet. I have to say it looks a lot better in-game than it does on just by the picture. 
and the in-game model really accentuates the armor plating. I think the color scheme just matches a lot better together. One thing I'm not a fan of, let's just get this one out of the way with, is the asymmetry. Like you can see with the shoulder pads and with the boots, there's a little bit of asymmetry and that's been a trend that has been happening with a lot of the recent items as well, especially the Mandalorian theme stuff. So I'm not really sure what they're going for there. I personally am just, I like symmetry. I think it's very pleasing to the eyes and so when I see an armor set, I just like both sides of it to be exactly the same. So I'm not a big fan of the asymmetry part. But uh, I've made it clear, I really like the helmet on this one. And a really cool detail to the helmet is that um, it actually has horns coming out from the top as well. So it's got this Darth Maul effect to it. I just think the helmet looks freaking awesome. It's going to go well with so many other armor pieces. And even the upper body armor is still pretty sweet, even with the asymmetry. Uh, the boots are good, the, the pants are good. I just like the armor plating. So yeah, all in all, it's a really neat armor set. And of course has the... Um, special effect that happens when you enter combat stance where you have the green hollow finder go over your eyes so that's a really neat effect as well so that's just a sweet gold item that's coming another mandalorian armor set once again inspired and based off of old lore which i think is great and all right best for last boys and girls we've got the basilisk war mount now here it is in all of its glory. this thing is magnificent i'm gonna start with the one thing i would have liked to improve on this one and that is the color I'm not a big fan of the green color. A lot of the pictures that I've seen online have been more of a chrome or a gold type of color. Uh, the green is okay. It doesn't really ruin the mount, but it doesn't help it either. I think it could have been a better color. But other than that, it looks freaking awesome. It's as big as a Rancor, so that's pretty neat. They could have gone with a smaller model, but it looks great as a bigger model. It has the jet drives that are constantly on in the back. Uh, the front head is always glowing red, and when you click Ctrl-Z or activate the mount flourish, it's going to fire its side guns. So all of those are just really great uh, effects to have on it. But other than that, just the size is awesome. It's got a tail that kind of flicks and moves around as you run. It's only got two legs. Originally, I thought they were going to have four, but it's got two legs. Remember, these are uh, war machines. So they were actually dropped from the sky, uh, from the bigger ships, and they would kind of just go running on the ground and mow through the enemies. So that's really what they're designed for. And I really feel like the design in-game stays true to their lore. Like, you really feel like you're in a war machine when you're running into this thing. And it's actually gold rarity, and that means it's going to be relatively more affordable than if it was platinum. Like, if this thing was platinum and released, it would be like 100 million credits and just be insanely expensive on the GTN. But as a gold rarity item, it's going to drop more commonly from ultimate packs. I'm pretty sure this won't be that expensive. Like, it'll still be grossly expensive, but not crazy crazy to the point where a majority of the player base wouldn't be able to afford it. So that's good news as well. All in all, I think this has met expectations. It's awesome. It's just going to be a great addition. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the previews. Let me know if you guys are as excited for this item as I am. Alright, and that concludes the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you guys liked this exclusive in-game look. I'm gonna keep calling it exclusive, because it makes me feel important, and it makes me feel like I made really awesome content, even though all I did was go on the public test server and open up a shit ton of cartel packs, hoping to get these out. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think is the most exciting item. I think the War Basilisk mount is really nice, but the Mandalorian Stormbringer helmet is really tickling my fancy as well. So I'm kind of excited for both of those. Let me know in the comments if you agree, and I'll see you guys in the next one.